Welcome back to the energy conversion lectures. In a previous lecture, a general expression for the mechanical energy and mechanical force have been derived in detail using path 1. The goal of this lecture is to derive two expressions for the mechanical force. One based on the change of the field energy and the other based on the change of the co-energy. Therefore, two methods for driving the mechanical force will be provided. The first method is based on path 2 and the second method is based on path 3. The first method, which is based on path 2, is called the fast mechanical movement method. While the second method, which is based on path 3, is called the slow mechanical movement method. The first method, which represents the fast mechanical movement from A to A dash, happens under constant magnetic field linkage psi1 during the movement from curve x1 to curve x2. While the second method, which represents the slow mechanical movement from A to A dash, happens under constant current I1 during the movement from curve X1 to curve X2. Let's keep in our mind that these two movements do not represent the actual movement of the relay system. However, these two movements paths are valid mathematically for deriving the mechanical force expression as mentioned in previous lecture. Now let's first give more details about the first method and try to show how we can derive the mechanical force expression Fm in terms of the change of field energy dWf. As mentioned earlier, the fast mechanical movement from A to A dash happens under constant magnetic field linkage Psi1. That means that the mechanical movement happens very fast and reaches position X2 while the change of magnetic field linkage is very slow and can be considered constant. Note that the current is reduced from I1 to I2 during the movement from A to A dash. This can be explained using the magnetic field linkage equation Psi equal Li. Since the magnetic field linkage Psi is constant, the current will be reduced from I1 to I2 because the inductance is increased during the movement. Once the moving part stopped at point A dash, the magnetic field linkage and the current I will increase following the trajectory A dash C until reaches the steady state at point C. The mechanical power during the trajectory A dash C is equal to zero because there is no movement during this trajectory. Therefore, there is no electromechanical energy conversion during the trajectory A dash C. Basically, we are going to focus only during the movement from A to A dash. Now, in order to identify the change of mechanical energy dWm and the mechanical force Fm expressions, we need to use the balance equation dWe equal dWm plus dWf and find first both the change of electrical energy dWe and the change of field energy dWf. Let's first find the change of the electrical energy dWe. Since the magnetic field linkage is constant and equal to Psi1, the change in magnetic field linkage d psi is zero, and therefore the change in the electrical energy dWe will be equal to I d psi and equal to zero. In other words, there is no change in electrical energy. 
Now, to find the change in field energy DWF, we need first find the field energy at point A and field energy at point A dash. The field energy at point A is equal to the yellow area OABO and represented by WF1. The field energy at point A dash is equal to the orange area OA dash BO and represented by WF2. The change in the field energy DWF is equal to the difference between the field energy at point A dash WF2 and the field energy at point A WF1. Therefore, the change of the field energy DWF will be equal to area OA dash BO minus area OABO. Since we identified the change of electrical energy DWE and the change of field energy DWF, the change of mechanical energy DWM can be calculated using the balance equation DWE equal DWM plus DWF. Therefore, the change of the mechanical energy DWM will be equal to minus DWF and this will equal to the blue area OA A dash O. As you can see, the blue area OA A dash O is equal to minus DWF and equal to the change of the mechanical energy DWM. The area OA A dash O represents the amount of reduction in the field energy during the movement from position X1 to position X2. In other words, the field energy at point A has been reduced by DWF during the movement to point A dash. The negative sign in front of the change of field energy DWF represents this reduction. This negative sign in front of the change of the field energy also means that the change in the mechanical energy acts in the direction to decrease or reduce the field energy at constant magnetic field linkage Psi 1. Now, since the change in mechanical energy DWM is equal to the force Fm times the change of position dx and equal to minus DWF, therefore the mechanical force will be equal to Fm equal minus DWF over dx. This expression shows that the mechanical force expression is equal to the negative sign of the change in the field energy over the change in the position dx. In other words, if the energy Wf is known, the mechanical force Fm can be calculated by taking the derivative of the field energy with respect to the position x. Basically, the force is equal to the derivative of the field energy with respect to the position x. The algebraic negative sign means that the mechanical force acts in the direction to decrease the field energy at constant magnetic field linkage. We have proved in a previous lecture that the change of field energy DWF is depending on two independent variables, the magnetic field linkage Psi and the position X. Therefore, the mechanical force expression can also be written as follows. Fm is equal to minus partial derivative of the field energy over partial X when Psi is constant.
Note that keeping the magnetic field linkage psi constant in the fourth expression is just a pure mathematical requirement during the derivation and has nothing to do with the actual operation of the single excited electromechanical energy system. In other words, path 2 from A to A dash under constant magnetic field linkage psi 1 is valid mathematically only. However, it does not represent the actual operation of the system. The actual operation of the single excited system is already explained in previous lectures. Now let's move on to the second method and try to show how we can derive the mechanical force expression Fm in terms of the change of co-energy. As mentioned earlier, path 3 represents the slow mechanical movement from A to A dash while the current is constant and equal to the steady state current I1 and equal to I1 equal V over R. In other words, the mechanical movement happens very slow while the change of current is very fast and can be considered constant. That means the current changes and reaches the steady state very fast with respect to the mechanical movement. Under this condition, the change in electrical energy dWe can be calculated by integrating the element I d psi from psi 1 to psi 2 and the result of this integration will be equal to I1 times psi 2 minus psi 1 and this will represent the orange area A B C A dash A. The change in the field energy dWf is equal to the difference between the field energy at point A dash minus the field energy at point A. The field energy at point A dash is equal to the green area O A dash C O and represented by WF2. The field energy at point A is equal to the yellow area O A B O and represented by WF1. Therefore, the change in the field energy DWF will be equal to the difference of area O A dash C O and area O A B O. Again, the energy balance equation DWE equal DWM plus DWF will be used to derive the mechanical energy expression and then the mechanical force expression. Basically, since we already identified the change in the field energy DWF and the change in the electrical energy DWE during the movement, the change in the mechanical energy DWM can be identified as follows. As you can see, the change in the mechanical energy is equal to the sum of the areas of the electrical and the field energy and the result will be equal to the blue area O A A dash O. If we look closely at the area O A A dash O, we can notice that this area represents the difference between the co-energy red area O A dash B O represented by W F 2 dash minus the co-energy brown area O A B O represented by W F 1 dash. In other words, the co-energy at point A has been increased by DWF dash during the movement to point A dash. That means the mechanical energy is equal to the increase in the co-energy DWF dash. Also, we can say that the mechanical energy is equal to the increase 
of the co-energy during the movement from position x1 to position x2 at constant current i1. Now since the mechanical energy dwm is equal to fm dx and equal to dwf dash, the mechanical force expression will be equal to fm equal dwf dash over dx. This expression shows that the force expression is equal to the change or derivative of the co-energy dwf dash over dx. In other words, if the co-energy wf dash is known, the mechanical force can be calculated by taking the derivative of the co-energy wf dash with respect to the position x. The algebraic positive sign of this expression shows that the mechanical force is in the direction to increase the co-energy at constant current. We have proved in a previous lecture that the co-energy dwf dash is function of two independent variables, the current i and the position x. Therefore, the mechanical force can be represented by fm equal to partial derivative of co-energy wf dash function of i and x over partial x when the current i is constant. Note that keeping the current i constant in the force expression is just a pure mathematical requirement during the derivation and has nothing to do with the actual operation of the single excited electromechanical energy system. In other words, path 3 from A to A dash under constant current I1 is only valid mathematically. However, it does not represent the actual operation of the system. The actual operation of the system is already explained in the previous lectures. At this point, we were able to derive two expressions for the mechanical force Fm for the single excited linear motion system such as the relay system. The question now, how we are going to derive torque expressions for the single excited electromechanical rotating system such as the shown. Basically, we are going to use the analogy between the linear and rotating motion systems. This can be done by replacing the linear motion displacement x by the rotating motion angle theta. Also, replacing the linear motion mechanical force Fm by the rotating motion mechanical torque Tm. Therefore, the torque expressions for the rotating motion single excited systems can be developed from the linear motion mechanical force as follows. Let's conclude this lecture at this point and we will continue in the next lecture. Let me know if you have any question. Also make sure to subscribe to this channel so you do not miss any lecture. Thanks for listening. I am Ihsan al nabi and it was pleasure sharing this lecture with you. Thank you.